It's, uh, thank you so much. It's, uh, it's a real pleasure to be here for this Tiny Desk performance with my good old friend Johnny Sebastian. Um, I'm in the middle of a world tour with these Goldberg Variations. That's what I just played for you, the Aria and Variation 1 from the Goldberg Variations, which I think is history's greatest keyboard work, the encyclopedia, how you can think and dream on the keyboard. I'm very glad that this guy is not with me on the whole tour, which is about 94 concerts, because he seems permanently displeased with everything I do. <laughs> um, it's great to also uh, reconnect with uh, the upright piano. Uh, that's actually the piano and instrument of my childhood in a way. I had a sort of a split personality in many ways and one of them was the fact that we had a grand piano in the living room and this I had in my bedroom. So this is my domestic piano um, from a family of musicians. My mother, a piano teacher, my father, architect, composer. So um, when I started complaining too much about not having access to the grand piano, they just put a really, really old Danish piano hardly functioning into my bedroom and I could share my musical secrets and grow up with this piano. So I'm, I'm happy to be here. I want to play for you something next that's from a great contemporary of Johann Sebastian Bach's, uh, Jean-Philippe Rameau, who was born two years before Bach in 1683. Uh, I did a whole album dedicated to him and Claude Debussy in 2020 called Debussy Rameau and in the process of researching that album I came across so much beautiful music from Rameau that I didn't know my favorite thing in the whole album and perhaps one of my favorite movements of all time is what I'm going to play for you next it's from Rameau's last opera Le Boreat um, this is a piece that he wrote when he was 80 years old he became very very old in those for those days and he never heard this piece Le Boreat and what I like about it is that it's impossible to pinpoint from when it 
comes. It is in the late, very late Baroque period or early classical, technically speaking. But this music, to me, could just as well have been written by Gustav Mahler in the late Romantic era or even early, early 20th century. I call this arrangement The Arts and the Hours. That's my title that I gave this arrangement. It has a very long technical title in the opera that will uh, take too long to explain. But The Arts and the Hours, my idea is, you know, art is long and life is short. Ramo never heard this and this piece had to wait 200 years to receive a full public performance in 1964. Incredible. Here you go. The Arts and the Hours, Jean Philippe Rameau. Thank you so much. And uh, thank you. Think, think about writing something like this and never getting to, to hear it, like was Ramos' destiny. Um, yeah, I, I spoke about this being my childhood piano a little bit. And I'm going to go back to my childhood now and play for you something that really was a big part of my musical upbringing. And oddly enough, it's music from Hungary. Um, 
folk music in particular from Hungary. Béla Bartok arranged so many of these beautiful, beautiful songs. He would travel around uh, the Hungarian region and Romanian region as well, recording farmers, old farmers, singing folk songs. This is in the early 20th century on these Vax Silenders and such a beautiful thing because what he was recording is music that wasn't really composed by anyone. It's something that was created together by generations of generations of Hungarians, grandmothers teaching their grandchildren, singing them lullabies, singing them songs before bedtime, who would then sing that same song to their grandchildren. Of course, the songs would train, change through the centuries, but that's what I love about folk music in general. It cannot be composed. It's the collective experiences of a nation, what makes us a nation, a society. What I'm going to play for you is three very brief songs, maybe my favorite Hungarian folk songs of them all. Three songs from Cheek that are so full of freedom, nostalgia, spontaneity. And I think Bartok has captured them so perfectly in his uh, arrangements for piano. Here you go. Three songs from Cheek arranged by Bela Bartok. Thank you. It's uh, it would it would be impossible to write a melody like this. I firmly believe that it has to be created through generations and generations of people. It touches my heart this music, and the next piece and the last one on my short menu here does so too. It is, I think, the single song that unites uh, the people from my nation, Iceland, in times of sorrow and in times of happiness. It's a song called Ave Maria. Every nation has to have their prayer, their collective prayers. 
and this is ours. This is what you hear in funerals, but you also hear it in, in weddings. Sigvald de Calderón, the composer, uh, he was actually an amateur musician, whatever that word amateur means. He was a doctor, medical doctor by profession, practicing medicine in the West Fjords of Iceland. Some of the most beautiful, but also sort of naturally the harshest and most difficult areas to live in in the whole country. He would write these melodies that would really live with a nation, but the more serious musicians wouldn't really take him seriously. It's really stood the test of time, though. Ave Maria, a prayer to the Holy Virgin Mary. Um, I made this arrangement quite a few years ago. It's actually the first time I ever made an arrangement of anything back in 2006. I dedicated it to my then girlfriend, now wife, so it paid off. And... Um, <laughs> <laughs> and um, it's very beautiful on the piano, but it's also very difficult to find p people outside of Iceland who sing Icelandic. So there we are. Ave Maria, Sigvaldi Caldalons, my little arrangement. Thank you so much, NPR.
Support for NPR comes from Capital One, presenting sponsor of the 2024 Tiny Desk Contest. 